Well, welcome. Thank you to, and welcome to my podcast, Harry Tangi, Farms and Fatals. Um, really pleased to be back here again and had some really good suggestions for next uh, my next chat. My last one was uh, dealing with death. Um, and this is just sort of personal experiences, coping mechanisms, what which I have used within the police for 30 years on frontline, on armed response, traffic and dealing with anything and everything on frontline just as response officers have as well. So um, it's these are the things that I, it took me... I wish, I wish I'd known these a little bit when I joined and it probably would have helped a little bit. Um, but then I probably wouldn't have believed them. But this is how I cope. This is how I love the job, um, even to the day I left. And I just thought, actually, it's a good time to go now and give someone else a chance, you know? Um, so what we're going to discuss is how it affects... Uh, my life um, privately as a police officer, how does it affect it privately, um, and coping, coping mechanisms with um, paperwork, uh, with CPS getting you asking, demanding, um, demanding uh, results by the next day. That's Arthur, my dog, having a little bark at the postman, I should imagine. Um, it'll be um, basically uh, dealing with custody and new procedures um, which are constant in the police absolutely constant um, and then uh, and then certain little things of just getting your mind set um, in the right way and something that really transformed my life uh, later on really uh, in my career which just solved everything for me I think so basically privately well I lived in Torbay and I worked in Torbay and I worked in Plymouth and Exeter and so my commuting time was either five miles it was either 22 miles or 40 miles each way um, and so the difference is, is when you're working within the town that you are policing, some people were really worried that you're just going to get abused. And um, that, that's probably been happened once or twice uh, for people. But it's not common. I can say it isn't common. Um, and so don't overly worry about it. A lot of the time, um, people just see the uniform. They don't necessarily see the person that they are uh, actually... Um, in that uniform unless you're very distinctive yeah so it's the sort of thing that when you're going out and about you might recognize them before they recognize you because it's different circumstances for them and if they do generally if you've treated them fairly which you should be then they don't really have too much of an argument uh, if they're an arse and they decide to kick up with your family then I, I'm, I've never had that in 30 years um, and I'm sure it's happened to a few people out there, but it's not common. So don't, don't worry too much about that. Don't let that affect you. When you commute for um, 22 miles, 30 minutes or whatever, then that takes all that away, really. Um, I, I never really got recognised in my own town. Um, because uh, just ne never really happened. It's something people worry about. Um, it just, just just doesn't matter. So I'd say put that out of your mind as far as if you're joining the police and you're worried about that side of things. Um, so very little impact on the family. As far as policing, yeah, the shift, you'd get used to it. After 30 years, what, what I've found weird is when I left is that you are constantly thinking, when am I next working? Have I got training? Oh, I've got that four days training. Oh, it's winter. It's going to be horrible and all that. Oh, God. Oh, I've got an assessment coming up. And there's constant pressures. But then you get that in every job. Um, and you think you you would think as well. You're always thinking slightly that I was able to shut off and make sure home was home, work was work. But every now and then you'd think, oh, I've got that pain in the ass file I need to do. That it's really awkward because I need to get a statement. And I haven't even found them yet, and that the deadline's up, and or and uh, you know, you're those sorts of things can can be quite stressful. And these are the ways that I find is helpful for doing dealing with that. So coping mechanisms, I would say, paperwork. Right. When I, I remember in Torquay, I had to skip it and the paperwork would come in. And I would, um, I'd prioritise it. Sensible, important, priorities. Important and priorities are different things. Some things are important that can be done next week. Some things are priority can be done, needs to be done now. Okay, but it's not massively important. 
So you've got to sort of, I had a rule of when it comes in, it goes out. And some things you can't do, like, like so a big file, I would do that on a night shift. I could do paperwork on a night shift. There's no phone calls, there's no emails coming in. And on the winter months, coming up now, January, February, March, everyone's run out of money, it's cold and miserable, they've paid for their summer holiday already, so they've got literally next, no money. They, they, they've, you know, they, they, January, February, March, it can be pretty dull months. Um, the duller of the months anyway. Um, and so you'll find that either on an early turn, when all the criminals are in bed, um, is the time to get rid of your paperwork and be quite disciplined with that and think, right, I've got it there. If you start thinking I'm going to do that next week sometime, it's a bad move. You need to think, got the file, I'm going to do it now. Kill it. Get rid of it. Um, if it's a long, worldly old file, don't look at the big picture. Don't think I've got that file. Oh, I'll cope with that nightmare next time. Just think, right, I'm going to do one, see if I can get that one statement. But if I can't do the one statement, let's do that one phone call in order to get that one statement. Hi, can I, have you got, oh, you're answering. Yeah, can I take a statement? Yeah, two o'clock. Make a date. Make a date. Two o'clock tomorrow, ideal. It's in your diary. Bang, that's gone. And that's 10% of the file finished. Um, it's making it, it's being organized enough daily to think my to-do list as such. Um, is and my to-do list was very short because I did one pretty much every day. I didn't necessarily have to write it out. I just knew what what can I do now, right? What must I do now? Okay, so and get something down. So the only time, for example, as well, if I'd had like four days leave or rest days or whatever, and I come in, I'd have 150 emails and I would have um, a load of each email 10 minutes, some emails 25 minutes. Um, and things like emails saying your PDRs are up and you need to do your PDRs. That's 22 officers. That's like, oh, it's just a nightmare. It's going to take, it's going to take three quarters now on each pretty much, you know? Um, so it, it, some things you have to then say, right, when am I going to do that? And then set a date in your diary, you know, in your calendar. That's when you're going to do that. Then when you get a call out that you can't avoid, you just get a call out you can't avoid. Set another date. Do it. All right, so that's really, um, I tell you what, it's all kicking off here. Arthur Dog is, he, he hears a little woo-woo on the security camera for the postman coming around. And if he's, he, he's with my wife or me and our phones go woo-woo, then he knows what that relates to and he knows it's the, the postman, so he kicks off. So going, so basically the emails, if I've done, worked four days and I've got 150, if I've had four days off rather, and I've got 150 emails, I will actually then use day one, if I can, to kill the emails. Get rid, all right? Because otherwise you'd like, you'll lose them. You'll lose the odd one and one will be really important. Like my winter scene back here, my winter scene, it's sort of Christmas. If you're looking at this in February, I'm sorry. Um, but there's the Christmas, that's it, Christmas, and that's some more Christmas. Um, and uh, so, and this is my Matt Ratana shirt. Matt Ratana, Ratana, I should say, Matt Ratana is the um, custody sergeant who was shot, uh, shot dead, uh, New Zealander, and this is the foundation, Matt Ratana uh, Rugby Foundation. So get your rugby shirts, support uh, local um youngsters rather um playing rugby it's really good gentleman's game as opposed to football anyway so that's it so you've got your emails done I, that's the it's just methodical and making a point in your diary no, not just putting it off you're putting off you're in trouble and you'll really struggle so i would go i'd say right one day gone for the emails potentially two if i had an email and a couple of files that needed to get done and it was really stacking up and then i'd say i'd have two days play day you know, two days playing in the cars and about. There was always a chance that you would obviously get called out. And on response, you'll find, well, we're always called out. But then you have to get those bits where on the early turns where you can get a little bit of peace and on the night shifts where you can get a bit of peace. Get it done. Bang. As soon as you can. You know, if you're doing general patrol, talking to your colleague and you've got paperwork, it's, it's important stuff. But if you get your paperwork done, then you can do your patrol, right? That's how to deal with that side of things. Um, and I remember being actually, I, I had literally pressure was building up. 
I had a whole load of emails. I was trying to crack through. I was being inter- interrupted every five, ten minutes. Coming back, I remember I had a Glock on my side, and I was, you know, um, I was farm tactics advisor. I was uh, do, and I was giving tactics advice on a job that was ongoing. It was relatively low key, so it wasn't having to redeploy myself and that side of things. But it was something I was keeping an eye on. And the boss was wanting arts, you know, I was feeding back to the boss and monitoring this thing. And then I had a pursuit TA said, Harry, we've got this coming up. It was probably an hour. In an hour's time, can we uh, get some pursuit advice? So I needed to put something on a log with that one. And then I had a, the reason I'd been called back to the station was the Met, thank you, the Met, had said massively high risk misper um, that was at potentially three addresses. Could I arrange for three address checks? And so I was thinking, right, I've got that to do as well. And then I had a, one of the section come in with a real personal issue that they needed to get sorted. So I couldn't sort of say, look, I'm busy. Can you go away? And I remember my, there was sort of chocolate starting to come out my ears as far as my brain had turned to chocolate. You know, that time when you just think, can't cope, can't cope, overload, overload, overload. And I remember I'd been to a funeral um, the week before of a radio operator and really popular guy really is just beautiful to listen to on the radio was and he was so skilled in his method of language and he was really excellent at just getting the units in the right place and he died at 50 and i remember everyone was really shocked and uh, and talking about him for seven days and then there was the funeral and then nothing and i remember thinking the most popular people and the most unpopular people Generally, after the funeral, if you think about it, nothing. You've forgotten. And I thought, if I died tomorrow, I wonder if I'd even be replaced, you know? It brings things into perspective. It makes you think, why am I spending my whole lifetime getting really stressed, worried, you know, I'm really getting that uh, word anxiety overused, but ang- really anxious, getting stressed. Some people are getting quite depressed about things. And it's setting your mind in the fact that actually, in a week's time, you'd probably be forgotten. Let's be blunt about this. So stop it. Don't. And the way I would deal with things such as, um, I learnt to say, boss, I've got this, this, and this. I really can't cope with that. Can you find someone else? Yes, yes, no problem. Bang, gone. All right? It was learning to say no because I wanted to please all the people all the time. Um, And it was learning to be able to say no. And when I had a CPS thing come in, in the old days, in the past, I would get a CPS email. Oh, my God, they want these two statements done by Thursday. It's now Tuesday. Well, it's Tuesday night got night shifts and Thursday I'm off or well, Wednesday and Thursday I'm off I'll have to come in I'd come in and do the statement and I'd try to arrange someone to do the statement but their motivation to get that statement done isn't the same as yours and they're busy so the chances are that statement wouldn't be done and you'll be worrying thinking, oh have they done that statement have they done that statement so I learned to say I'm sorry I'm on nights and then days off um, that's not possible I'm afraid could you arrange another deadline I get nothing back, you know? Well, if I get got something back, it would be like, oh yeah, okay, when um, can we make it by the end of the month then? They'd re-adjourn the court date, you know? Do it, try it. As long as you actually, um, as long as you actually evidence why you can't, you know? As long as in that email you say, right, this is my problem, you know, you're almost saying, could you tell me in, in my calendar at the moment where I can fit that in? You know, because if you can find somewhere, then I'm more than happy to do that. You need to evidence it in the nicest possible way and say, look, I'd love to do this. I'm really keen to do this, but unfortunately, it's just impossible at the moment because of this. Because you'll find that CPS and criminal justice units do tend to believe that you work Monday to Friday, nine to five, and that crime doesn't occur on a late or a night shift. So there's no point having cops out there. All right. And they believe that you have the weekend off. And everything goes from Monday to Friday. That's, that, they generally believe that. I'm absolutely convinced of it. All right. So they won't ask you to do anything by Saturday or Sunday, of course. Um, but it's always the other five days. 
So that's a really good coping mechanism is learn to say no, but evidence it when you are and learn to say to your sergeant or do you know what? I need time out. I, I'm getting overloaded with paperwork. Can I can you try to keep me free today while I just get this done and then I, I'm, I'm off walk running again? You'd be amazing. Certainly a good sergeant should recognise that you're getting a bit stressed and should sort that something out. I certainly did that. You know, I certainly made sure my unit saying, well, actually, there's a few on today. You're going to be used up anyway. Yes, if there's a life or death situation, I can grab that person out of their paperwork and get it going. Of course they will. But then I can prioritise things a little bit better. And that's what a good supervisor should be doing. Um. And I found if I got went down to custody and I'd think, oh, God, I haven't been down here for a while, you know. And I always made sure I did make arrests, even as a sergeant, even on ARVs, because because you couldn't, you'd be tripping over drink drivers or disqualified drivers. I mean, if you were looking at the intel and you were on your daily patrol or whatever, and you were going around to see the car, and then, oh, there's the car, right. Um, so, but it would, I'd, I'd do less than, obviously, the PCs on my section, um, more on a couple of them. Uh, but... Um, but it would be, I'd be in custody and I'd be thinking, mm, okay, um, this has all changed, I should imagine, the procedures, the paperwork, whatever. And the best thing is, is just embrace it, accept it, all right? Say, so, oh, look, I've been out of the loop for a bit. I chose what we call a probationer, you know, a, a brand new officer out of the packet. And uh, as some of you guys will be listening here probably, and I would say as the ARV sergeant, oh, hi, um, could you possibly tell me, how do I do this? How do I log that one out? Or what, how do I get custody records now? You know, not, you know, previous convictions rather. How can I, do I have to do that through CDRB? Do I have to, do I have to email or can I um, get them myself? Or, you know, because things change daily. They change, you know, often people who've been away for two years thinking, oh, I need retutoring. I said, don't worry, you'd need that after four weeks. Things change so much. So don't be embarrassed about asking. And those who are embarrassed about asking try to hide it and they people see through them straight away. They try to avoid it. They try to avoid doing interviews and getting involved with arrests and things. And they have a terrible reputation. So don't do it. And you knew it was just lack of confidence. And so people just say, bloody hell, sergeant's just asked me how to do this. And they've been in five minutes and that empowers them. And they're only too happy to help them. And then you can learn because they've had the latest information about how to do it. So that's just ask, just ask. Now dealing with that, we've all had those days where you're really busy. You want to, you really want to get off to that shift. You want to get off home for that shift because something's happening at home, and it's really important. Your you, you, your wife, your husband, is saying, "Oh, I'll try to get off on time today, won't you?" Yes, yes, yeah, I, would, I definitely will because I've got cleared my paperwork, so it should be fine. And then, especially like on a night shift, and you're finishing your night shift, and you're going into a day off, and you get an arrest at six o'clock in the morning and you're due off at seven. Oh, you know, and you know that there's no help available and you know that you have got now three or four hours of paperwork. Logging the exhibits, you know, and you're looking after the prisoner whilst they're getting booked in. You've got to log the exhibits. You've got the state, your statement summaries, the, you know, the handover file and you've got to get the convictions, convictions down, which is a process. You've got to crime it. All these things and you're going, oh, you're so angry you're frustrated and we've all been there and you just have to go breathe okay at a certain point you've got to realize that don't look at the big picture of the four hours just think do you know what i'm 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 messed up now this is just not going to happen i'm not going to get home this is it i can't get out of it all the moaning and screaming just think you get paid for days like that the other fun days you do for free those fun days where everything went beautifully and you've had the best shift. You were the crewmate you enjoyed. You had a pursuit. You had a foot chase. You caught them all. They went to custody. And CID went, well, we'll have those off you. You know, those rare moments. We'll have those off you. Thank you. We'll deal with them because they're we're involved in big jobs. And then you go in and life's brilliant. Then you get off of work and you, you, you have you know, a couple of drinks with your colleagues in the sun, in the summer's day, and everything's light. Well, you do those for free because Joe Public would do that for free, yeah? And I just think, just think then you're being paid for the days that you really don't want to be there. You know, if you think about you being paid the same, it's not nearly as nice. And just think, right, then don't look at the big picture. Don't look at the mountain you're climbing. Look at the feet in front of you. Look at the steps in front of you. So think, right, 
What do I have to do first? Okay, I'm going to crime it. Just crime it. Right, what do I have to do next? Right, next, statement. Don't rush, 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 trying to get off. You'll save probably about 20 minutes and it'll be massively stressful. Or you'll mess up. The computers will freeze and then you'll have to reboot and, and everything's going to, and you get delayed even more. Just think, right, write that day off. It doesn't happen every day. Some people say, oh, yeah, it does happen every day. No, it doesn't. It happens sometimes for a lot. Some people in the Met as well. It happens lots of days. But remember, you do get paid for it as well. Um, apart from the first half hour. So there, you know, just think of that. That's a coping mechanism. Mentally, that's really helpful for me to go, just resign yourself to the fact, that's it. That's where you are. Just do it. You can do this for any jobs, I suppose. Not just police, can't you, really? Okay, so then probation is great. Get there. We've sorted them out. We've, you know, sorted their, the file out rather. We haven't sorted the probation out. They've been brilliant. They're really handy. They've gone through the system. They know how to do it, at least. The, the, the latest way how to do it. And, and that's the way to do with it. Paperwork, emails, prioritise. Just get it done. When it comes in, it goes out. Then, okay. And it's really good to try to arrange a, a, a social life, yeah? Try to arrange... So just go out with a section now and then. It's, it's hard to do because it's easy just people to go home. Who fancies going out for a, a drink after work, you know? Um, and it, it's just, just really important and it just brings everyone together, especially around Christmas. Let's do a Christmas do. I preferred rather than sit down meals where you're looking at one person opposite and their wife you've never seen before, is we, we prefer just to have the section night out. And we, we went um, Topsham, we used to hire the bikes there, cycle along, they probably still do actually, cycle all the way down into, or halfway down to Exmouth and do a pub crawl on the bicycles. Um, and there, it's, it's just the, you don't hit any roads, you know, it's all cycle wooden, on the, wooden tracks on the, uh, on the coastline. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and it was just, uh, and then you just have a meal amongst yourselves and it's just, it was just a great de-stressing situation. Now, how do I? How do you get over the fact that these little scrotes, all right, people we deal with all the time who are into crime and have no respect uh, for anyone that they deal with, all right? Um, how do you deal with them? They, you know, you've, you've, you've locked them up. They've said what they're going to do to your missus. They said what you're going to... They, they know where your house is. They're going to burn it down and all that stuff. And they desperately try to intimidate you and you think... Yeah, good try. Heard it before. Um, but how do you get through life when you realise, oh, there they are the next day and nothing's happened to them and they're laughing, quite frankly. I used to laugh at them. I said, well, I, I own my house. <laughs> I've got a nice car, nice house. Thank you very much. What have you got? Oh, yeah, I know what you've got. You've got, have you got a house? No. Have you got a flat? No. Okay, have you got a bed sit? Yes. Is it sticky floors? Yes. Is it got drugs paraphernalia all over it? Yeah. Are you actually quite miserable in your life? Yeah. And even though you might not say it, sometimes you might say it to them if you're having a discussion with them. You know when they come away from all their mates and you're having a discussion, you're chatting to them in the car and they go, well, what's the point? You know, why? I'm just, you know, I've got no choice. Well, you know, I used to say to people, especially young people, I say, "Well, you know, start off as start off as a cleaner, and then and then create your own cleaning firm later on, and step by step. You never know; you might have a national company after that. You know, but and but you might get into other things as well. Then that's how you start. But people want everything for nothing. They want it immediately, and it doesn't work like that. And they're scared of a bit of hard work." But those who are just horrible, despicable people, um, I just look at their flats and think, you live in an absolute pigsty. This is your life for the rest of your life. Nothing's going to change really in the 20, 30 years apart from you might die. Uh, and I live in a very nice place with a very nice car. Thank you very much because I've worked hard and things. And, and my life's good. You know, I've got family, friends, everything's good. Some friends. Um, and that, again, is a really good... When you've got someone saying, yeah, you're this, that, and the other, you know, and you're, I'm going to burn your ass down, all this sort of thing. Well, first of all, they don't. You know, that doesn't happen. Um, always about worry about the ones who don't tell you what they're going to do. Um, the ones who do tell you what to do, they're, they're, what they're going to do, that you've got no fear of whatsoever. 
Um, and then just, just that does, <laughs> you just end up smiling at them. <laughs> Mate, I'm all right. You're not. And again, that's another coping mechanism mentally that I find is really, really helpful. Just puts you in the right frame of mind. And you have to be quite robust, quite robust about it. Quite, you know, you'll get your little snowflake brigade who will say, oh, that's terrible. These poor people, these victims of society. It's like, shut up. You've got a choice. They've got a choice. And uh, at some point with rehabilitation, and they got to want to rehabilitate themselves. Like an alcoholic does, like a drug dealer. You can't force them to. They have to want to be. So the same snowflakes, you don't want people locked up in prisons. Um, we need more prisons. There's only 83,000 people in prisons out of 65 million. We haven't got enough. And we need to sometimes just give society a break. All right, my soapbox finished. Thank you very much. Um, so it just gives society a break and it sends a line in the sand where people can actually say that is the line of acceptability for society. That's what I think. So those are the methods, all right? I've just run through them very quickly again, really, is is just my coping mechanism, paperwork. When it comes in, it goes out. Emails, in, out. Do your heavier paperwork if you can't do it there and then on your early turns, on your night shifts in particular. Sometimes your early turns will be busy from start to finish and night shifts will be busy to start to finish. But you will get those times, um, those particular shifts that are quieter make the most of them cps learn to say no criminal justice system but evidence it evidence why so if they complain which they won't because they're too busy to complain all right if they complain if they've managed to hold on to a file for three months and then or longer and then they've you know they've had that file because they are overworked they're busy as well so i'm not blaming them but they want everything then done in the next few minutes that's not possible sometimes so they'll just have to adjourn it again to another day all right if you're stuck, don't panic. If you're saying, can you do the interview tonight to this morning, please? And you're thinking, God, I haven't done one for ages. I have no clue. Just don't be afraid to ask. Say, look, I'm out of the loop on this for a minute. Can you just remind me on how to do this? People don't mind telling you. They actually respect you for it. <clears throat> when you're doing those horrible days, you just want to get home and it's just miserable and you're really angry and frustrated, uh, you're getting paid for those days. The others you do for free. All right. I use that for myself quite a long quite a lot of time and if you just think that actually there's no justice in life well maybe the court system can't provide the justice because the prisons they don't want to fill them with prisons the community service doesn't work and so people go into court be told not to do it again and are released again or they get told that they've got five years in prison and they're out after 10 months um you know that sort of thing and um, just think they live in squalor they have horrible lives they're only their friends are not real friends and uh, they're only friends because they can get drugs off them um take satisfaction from that and with that cheerful note please subscribe please subscribe like this please and just let me know send the comments through tell them what you do like what you don't like and um and we can see what we can do in future to to do other subjects um and keep this youtube channel live thank you very much uh it's been a pleasure talking to you. Happy Christmas, if it's still just before Christmas for you. Cheers, guys. That didn't work. Let's try again.